Okay, hi, Dimitri. Um, how to pronounce your first name and last name correctly? <laughs> Adam. Uh, Dimitri Chuiko. Chuiko. Yeah. Chuiko? Is it perfectly pronounced? Chuiko. Chuiko. A bit, uh, uh, sounds a bit Japanese, but it's not. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I mean, J Japanese would be also fine. So, Dimitri Chuiko. Okay. Um, okay, what was your first computer? I assume not Japanese one, right? Uh, right. Uh, that was, I believe the very first one uh, was a Soviet uh, kind of low powerful machine with logo language. Uh huh. And I was at first grade. I but what was the was name a... of the computer? No. Um, Maybe it was some BK. BK, you say? Yeah. I won't say exactly. I, I remember the name of a uh, more advanced one. Uh -huh. It was not really a computer, but a terminal in school. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, the first one was in school. The second one, like next mm -hmm. generation, uh, mm -hmm. was at school. Uh, it's called, it's called uh, Nemiga. Interesting system. Uh, the Thin Clients. Amiga, you said? No, no Amiga, right? No Amiga 500, no. No, no, no. So it's uh, the Minsk. Uh, ah. Andre, Minsk that. machine. That's yeah. interesting. So the first time, you know, this conversation gets a little bit more interesting because all <laughs> other guests they had in OC64 or ZX Spectrum, and you are coming with BK and Minsk, right? Uh, yeah, Nemiga. No, not, not the big Minsk one. Uh, that was okay. kind of old supercomputer. Minsk, but... Uh, yeah, and then uh, first uh, traditional one, uh, which was a personal, that was Pentium 100 megahertz. Okay, this is boring, the, the Pentium one. But the BK, what you did, you programmed Logo with that? So Logo ran on the BK? Logo on BK and then Basic on Nemiga. Nemiga is the name, right? Nemiga. Yeah, yeah. Nemiga. Mm -hmm. Then it was uh, Pascal, of course. On mm -hmm. different machines. Uh, but I'm interested in now BK and Nemiga. Was it a, like a Russian logo or English? So it was it still, you know, the commands were Russian like logo. turn... Ah, okay. Yeah. Not not too many constructs in logo, you know, but... No, turn right, yeah. left, and go, or something like this, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh -huh. and, and the CPU? Is it a, was it a Russian CPU? I believe uh, it was some clone. Yeah. Okay. But still, interesting. So you have custom machines. Uh-huh. And Nemiga was a terminal at school. So you had already at school you pro programming uh, classes? Yeah, we did. Uh, not all schools had that. I was among lucky ones. And I think that played role. So I still uh, keep friendship and we work together uh, with some of my classmates. Yeah, that, that's interesting, actually. It's a, it's a, it's a great story. Uh, when was it? Which year was it, roughly? Oh, <laughs> uh, so it was 1990. Okay. Maybe so it was even like 89. Interesting. So back then that you had already computers at school because it was not usual, I would say, to have uh, classes, yeah. computer classes. Okay. And you programmed BASIC at school? Yeah, we programmed BASIC, uh, even there's some graphics. Okay. Then trying to, you know, uh, then you come to a task... Uh, of building plot for some math function, mm -hmm. and then uh, you face the task of uh, building a plot for a arbitrary function that you write as a text. Okay. And then, okay, I need something which is actually a parser, mm -hmm. basic compiler or something, or an interpreter, and you think of really how people to solve that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and you and you. Solved that at school or later? No, not okay. at that time. Okay. Yeah. I learned how to, what, what it is uh, later and learned how to solve it. Yeah, uh, later I also had, uh, you know, a lot of thoughts about, you know, how to make text work, right? This is the basic question. You have something, you know, you would like to configure something more yeah. without compiling, without, you know, running the program. You would like at runtime to feed something in. Yeah, it was always fascinating. Okay, and yeah. the next computer was... Data. Plot your algorithm and yeah. maybe write your program mm -hmm. with a sheet of paper. Then. Yeah. And uh, your next computer was Pentium, so it was a huge jump. Yeah, it was able to run Windows 95. Yeah, but this is crazy. Like you skipped a few years, so you were on vacations? <laughs> no, of course, there were others. There were others uh, 
like again in school, uh, the uh, early Pentiums. Maybe okay. It was not 200 megahertz, but like 166. Yeah, yeah. MMX. Multimedia was a very popular world. I first learned about HTML, so, you know, Alta Vista. Mm -hmm, exactly. Lycos. Lycos. Yes. Or Lycos. Yes. Exactly. I even heard something about uh, different operating systems. Or browsers started at that time. Mm -hmm. So you were cutting edge? Um, pretty much. Yeah. I started to, to work with Java rather early. Mm -hmm. Not from the very beginning, but... Yeah, but how, how it happened? So so you, you were at school and then you got your Pentium. So how you got your Pentium? <laughs> so, 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 I mean, you you got it for Christmas or you bought it? Or yeah. You had... yeah, like that, like that. And just uh, that was a gift. Um, uh -huh. And it was cool to have a personal computer, not uh, nothing for gaming, but a real computer. So, so you, so you are not a gamer. So, you, you wanted to do something more serious with it, right? Yeah, yeah. Abs and you what, wanted and did, or you just wanted to do something serious and, and and gamed all the time, you know, and played all the time. Yeah, it was mostly about uh, programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what do you, what was your dream you know what do you would like to achieve with the programming so uh, and which programming l uh, language you choose to with uh, to use on 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 the pentium uh that was pascal mm -hmm. later also c mm -hmm. and pascal in different flavors uh, like mm -hmm. delphi and then was lebanon lazarus at the time but there was um calix you had yeah. to wait for that computer calix uh, with kai anyway. ipson was from Boland, right Right, right. I later uh -huh. worked in Borland. Oh, I worked for Borland. No kidding. So this was, uh, I, and okay. I used, I was a huge J, uh, Borland J Builder fan. Uh, I worked at J Builder team. Thank you. <laughs> oh, uh, then thank you for the for the idea. I was delighted with everything. Uh, you know, with the design, how it worked. I started with J Builder three, I think. I don't know whether I used two, but J Builder three, I remember vividly. So I use it a lot. The yeah. professional version. In Enterprise was crazy without the Corba, but professional is what I used. And yeah, so and uh, for... for maybe, and maybe that was not the product that I participated because I came uh, at the moment uh, it all uh, switched to Eclipse as a platform. This was a mistake from my perspective. Uh, probably. The, that was an interesting move. Mm -hmm. uh, there were other many reasons to do that. So as a unified ID platform with plugins. Uh, so modeling plugins also used some mm -hmm. uh, shared logic from Eclipse modeling framework and EMF, mm -hmm. whatever. But, but it's yes. getting more and more interesting. So what is your path between, you know, Delphi and C to Borland? So, I mean, first, what do you wanted to, to program on your Pentium? What is your dream? What do you like to, 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 to code a game or what, what, what do you wanted to achieve? I've made some programs uh, for my friends and relatives, like, you know, uh, for example, small program that draw a button to eject your CD tray. Okay. Or to display okay. if uh, the CD is in. Mm -hmm. Or a small database uh, for information about uh, internal equipment at uh, telephone stations. Mm -hmm. Mom worked that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, different tasks related first to my education and then to my work. Telephone station? I mean, what? Uh, why? What is the use case? Because my mom worked there. Ah, okay, perfect. Just Okay, I, I thought you I know for your household. It's okay, this was interesting, you know. Or uh, uh, me and my friends started to learn uh, uh, MS uh, XSDB uh, to make a small uh, database and GUI to manage uh, toy production. Okay. Also for our friend. So, so you were so you wanted actually to impress your relatives, you know, with your with the, with the software. So, like you know, to deliver and give them something useful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Make Which good. reminds me, of this you said you know the first you know eject software a CD is more like you know App Store like now. This is a lots of small. Apps, very small, which do do one thing. This was like you know, what you did as a kid. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and the interest was to make it as small as possible. Yeah. So to program pure, you know, Windows APIs. Mm -hmm. and how to make that? That that wasn't written in assembly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least it was written in C, but still. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I assume it was more like a view Max under one Mac, I guess, right? Yeah, and so then later uh, again in high school, I turned uh, to some type programming, even some drivers. Learned how to write a driver for Windows at high school. Not later. bad. So I mean, uh, this is like Silicon Valley is nothing against that, you know? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's it's just slightly different different countries. I just started to work uh, the third year of my education. Mm-hmm. In our environment, it was typical at that time. I believe it happens later now for young people. It, it depends. Uh, um, maybe it is no more that exciting, you know. Back then, it was uh, something new. And, and now it is normal that the computers talk to you and do whatever. Back then, you know, if you make the computer to do something, it was a huge achievement. And now it's almost yeah, normal. Yeah, magician. <laughs> yeah, now, now you have, you know, how it's called, the series and all the others. And, um, and, and this is less magic, you know. Back then, we were able to, to print Hello World on the screen and, and, and felt good about that. So this, this is maybe the difference. Which driver do you wrote on Windows? For what? Why you needed a driver? Uh, that was a rather custom device, mm-hmm. uh, controlled by a microcontroller, and I also let it participated in programming that stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, so was it like a secret uh, device or what? Uh, yeah, kind of secret device. Um, okay. So we. That's it, it's interesting that the, you can reuse a lot of code uh, between uh, Windows and Linux, for example. Mm-hmm. Again, it's an interesting exercise uh, to write a driver uh, that compiles for multiple operating system mm-hmm. and to share as much logic as you can. So, uh, I just know expecting now you will tell me that with the with the secret device you participated in James Bond movie or something, you know, or or, or, <laughs> or the plot of a James James Bond movie was after you know your work on the secret devices. <laughs> no, not, not, not so secret, but yes. Okay, um, okay, um, and and then what happened? I mean, uh, in high school you were able to to to, and you enjoy of course programming, right? So it was like. I enjoyed mathematics much more. Oh, really? Well, I started with that, uh, especially in school. Like, this was programming. What's that? It's okay. Mm-hmm. We do some fun programming to solve real tasks, but is it real fun itself? Mm-hmm. Because uh, some people start to love uh, programming from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, some are just interested, but then you learn more, and then mm-hmm. you connect things, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially then you connect that mathematics and other parts of life, mm-hmm. and you see uh, how business tasks are solved effectively by software and hardware IT systems, mm-hmm. and how much uh, room is still available for optimization in our regular daily life. Yeah, this this no kidding. I mean, if you if you yeah. s- even you know all the automation systems whatever, they are very stupid right now. Whatever you you, yeah. you look at this and we don't even need to know ML to improve it. Uh, some sometimes a switch statement <laughs> or a better if else would just do. Yeah, still a lot of old stuff, fully automated stuff, a lot of paperwork. Mhm. Exactly. So, um, so you were more interested in mathematics and less in programming. So it 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 flipped in one point of time that you say, okay, now I like, uh, or or you just studied mathematics and uh, the programming was just a job, not a profession. It was job. It was cool uh, to be uh, at the department uh, that I graduated. What was it? Secret uh, department? No. No, software engineering. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, St. Petersburg State University, and okay. the faculty is uh, mathematics and mechanics. Okay. You see no programming in its name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. But this was in Germany the... uh, exactly the same. As I started to study, it was exact. I think there was uh, still there was not like dedicated software engineering. It was more like software engineering was a part of something, you know, related to technology. Yeah, and it was considered like all that uh, software departments. They don't really teach you. Things. They just mm-hmm. teach you how to write programs, mm-hmm. and you know only that. Mm-hmm. That's not a real education. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, that influenced me uh, very much. So mm -hmm. I'm still in that camp. Oh, I but you are still so. a, we are still a nice guy, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you are in the camp. <laughs> we had still some fun. Okay. Um, so what do you mean by that? So, so you enjoy more formal education, like you know, algorithms and big O notation instead of teaching how to code. Uh, Is this what yes, you're saying? Okay. Both. Uh, that the theory related uh, purely to or mostly to computer science. To me, it. It's always always complicated, mm -hmm. so it's um, you know algebra, the f discrete uh, stuff, mm -hmm. and it's it's tricky. It's uh, it's beautiful only in the end, then you yes. get the plan for your actual calculations. There are uh, points uh, where multiple complicated areas connect, uh, like the simplex method, for example. Uh -huh. Both related uh, non discrete mathematics and real calculations. Or, mm -hmm. And you solve uh, differential equations. Mm -hmm. Complex stuff. And then. Uh, what's, interesting, learning... uh, what's interesting, Dimitri, uh, I'm exactly the other way around. So if, um, I was completely fascinated with computers and I wanted to code from day one. I had no idea why. I just w wanted to be able to do so, maybe to use the computer properly, whatever. And uh, and I I didn't saw the connection between math and programming. The cool story was the entire time I I found you know math boring and computers exciting or coding. So um, I I did similar path to yours. So I started with basic, then uh, Pascal without C. No, it was actually the same. Pascal, then C, and very quickly C++, and then Java. This was basically what I, what I did. And now I see the connections. So now I would really like, you know, to learn more about math. And uh, if I look at, at, at functions in math and I see in my, 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 my programs, I see the connection. But back then, I see math is no boring stuff. Maybe about, you know, how it was uh, thought, uh, taught uh, at the school, you know, if the teachers were... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, it was uh, for me. It was like pointless to 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 know all the stuff, and uh, we, for we always see the connections late. Uh, yeah, and, and now I see the connections, and uh, and and why I'm uh, telling you this because um, you say you said uh, what what is talked uh, talk, um, it was about the um, how it's called the equations. Yeah, differential equations. D differential equations, exactly, and the uh, differential equations. Um, were which I so in study I enjoyed math a lot more then because I I was able to learn everything from scratch the entire math in very short time I think it was like two semesters or so. we had a crazy math professor he said you know we will learn everything from the start and this made me motivated and I really enjoyed that because it was everything was compressed so you, you had to follow everything you know very quickly and what I didn't like were differential equations because for me it was like a like cheating. Right, <laughs> because everything before was more precise, and now there's like approximation of the curve. I was like, okay, approximation. I mean, this is why I can write an OR for loop in my computer and do the same, right? And and this was actually better connection that uh, computers would be very good in differential equations. So I started to love programming, uh, then I started to work. And ah, so you, so stuff. you, you started to love programming. Yeah. Oh, very good. So, so this we are actually, uh, you know, we are inverse to each other. <laughs> now, uh, now I like more math than before. I always loved, um, but you still like math, I guess, right? So, but you like programming more, maybe. So I, I do it much more. So yeah. I, I started mm -hmm. to uh, get back to math uh, with my older son. Okay. Yes. You know, has uh, mathematics in school and. Is, is your son now poor or lucky? Now is the question. I will have to interview him, you know. <laughs> yeah. You enjoy, you know, education from your father or not so much, right? <laughs> and he says, okay, we also have uh, a computer. Um, oh, do, do we have another topic, right? <laughs> classes, yeah. And... Okay, but he, will, he won't listen to this, so uh, don't worry. Uh, and, um, okay, so um, you worked during your university time? With already with uh, you, you wrote some commercial code, or was just you know about university. Right, you, you start uh, to work commercial co uh, to write commercial code, mm -hmm. and uh, 
started with two different lines, uh, like company that I worked in was tightly coupled uh, with the department I studied. Mm -hmm. You basically sit at work and oh. then you go classes uh, mm -hmm. back. Um, Which company and, was it? Uh, it still exists and it's called Lanitacom. Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it like... It does many different things. Okay. And what's what's good uh, that you could... Uh, Paid both in in-house product uh, development and also in different, absolutely different projects uh, from external customers. Okay. So uh, we had chances company. to touch. Uh, yeah. Okay. Consulting, but uh, uh, you know, uh, highly skilled okay. uh, consulting company uh, with compiler engineers, oh, okay. uh, scientific background, etc. So it's not uh, the PowerPoint is not. Too much, you know. The expertise more like compliance. yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So all, all new technologies were studied both uh, from a scientific point of view and this, from, this is actually surprising, yeah, inter interesting. That something like this, okay, this is really interesting. So there's like uh, what you are talking right now is everything was high end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from your beginning, you know, with your uh, BP. What's the name of your uh, Russian computer and the uh, uh, means? Yeah, Ape, yeah. And, Every and to, to now is like uh, really exciting and and, and 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 you know high end stuff. Okay, and what happened after study or after you know working with the company? You started Boland. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I worked for a couple more years uh, mm -hmm. in the same company. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I stepped to Borland. How, how was the transition? Uh, how you, how you found Borland? I believe uh, some of my friends invited okay. me and said, mm -hmm. okay, just mm -hmm. try, uh, mm -hmm. let's talk. Uh, mm -hmm. that's and it. which and which programming languages you knew back then? So uh, there was Pascal, you said C, and then a university, what you learned? So Because I assume in Poland you had to do Java, right? Uh, yeah, it, it was Java at that time already. And it started, uh, so during my work at Planetacom, I changed. That was... Like Visual, Visual Basic, mm -hmm. uh, then C++, mm -hmm. uh, XSLT, oh, uh, XSLT and related is stuff. XSLT was yeah. like uh, the first functional programming language, right? You did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely not the first, but yeah, mm -hmm. and all that for production Yeah, it was stuff. the first. There was no, you, you didn't mention nothing functional before, right? So it was C, Pascal. Lisp, uh, oh, you did Lisp as well. Uh, no, not for, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Industrial oh, okay. stuff, uh, but at, at school, okay, I got it. Yeah, university. Mm -hmm. And then Java came. Yeah, and what's your impression oh, of Java? Okay. And I'm really curious because now you're highly skilled, you know, uh, Windows driver, secret sec secret device programmer, hacker, and now you see Java. What's your what's your what's your impression of Java back then? Um, my colleagues shown me. Uh, so I had one task mm -hmm. to uh, rewrite. Uh, Prototype written in Java for mm -hmm. some multi-threaded proxying uh, application mm -hmm. to rewrite it to C++. Mm -hmm. And I immediately saw all the bad things of C++ I never thought could be solved. Mm -hmm. And they were solved in Java. Mm -hmm. Most of all, of course, it was automated memory management. Mm -hmm. Also, I saw great IDEs already mm -hmm. available at that time, like JBuilder. Mm -hmm. Then my colleagues worked at other technologies. Uh, Tomcat oh, mm -hmm. was created about at that time. Mm -hmm. And there were projects where texts uh, were mixed. Again, XSLT and Java, for example. Mm -hmm. so it was quite natural to start solving more complex tasks. So you for... used Xalan, I think. You know, remember Xalan? X -A yeah, of yeah. course. This was the XSLT, what I used. And, and maybe Cocoon back then. You remember Cocoon? Uh, not Cocoon, but uh, there were uh, special devices <laughs> that made some dark magic hard stuff. I believe not at hardware, but it was okay. a black box that uh, made a lot of XSLT transformations. Was it the, the, was it the Barracuda boxes? Uh, Barracuda, that was uh, XS40. Uh-huh. Because the Barracudas Maybe. were, you know, the, I, I remember they were boxes uh, just for XML. And I think they were Barracudas, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. That, that. And I, I you also used uh, XSLT back then mostly for FOP. And I don't know whether you remember FOP. This was the formatic object for PDF generation, for instance. In our case, uh, it was different. Uh, mm -hmm. It was web platform. 
Okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. I saw later how this technology changed its shape uh, and changed uh, niche uh, mm -hmm. for um, templating some mm -hmm. quite recent, uh, quite wanted at the time systems. Yeah, we used it for everything, and it was really crazy, like for yeah for all templating. Yeah, back then the XSLT was uh, really. XSL, exactly. This was his tie sheets, and the XSLT was the transformation where you could transform one to another. And I remember still the code in Java. So, you know. Uh, XML was fancy. So, yeah. uh, Corba times passed yeah. relatively fast. And then XML was very fancy still. So it was XML 2003, databases. 2004 time frame, right? <laughs> we are talking about right now. Yes, yes. Yeah. 2004, okay. 2005. Then SOA was already on, on the horizon, all the SOAP craziness. So, uh, Corba Cor was told. It. To, to be too heavyweight, so they introduced soap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and ESBs. <laughs> so this was <laughs> this was the idea back then, you know, to solve, you know, the Corba bloat with uh, soap and ESBs. Exactly. But I am expecting the same soon because uh, we are already have JSON with schemas and uh, so we have uh, already ESB similar technologies on the horizon. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, it, it all goes uh, circular. Yeah, very good. So, um... Uh, mm -hmm. So at the yeah, company, it, it, you, did, it, you did some XSLT uh, programming, you said, and you programmed uh, web platforms, and, and then you switched to Borland, okay? Uh, to continue Java, and that was Java on desktop. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, Java on mobile also uh, developed like crazy. J2ME, yeah. Then, uh, then I chose uh, my first mobile phone, uh, having uh, Java mm -hmm. in that. Which one? It was kind of. It was an old Siemens one. Ah, I have um, another one from Java One. I have it actually still with Java Fix, and the I wanted to have T Sharp. This was also at the time frame Zaurus, I think, or with Z was also native Java with Linux terminal even. And I had the Nokia, and I think Nokia also had Java on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Java ME, and it was very impressive, and it's still impressive if you think of how poor the device is from the hardware perspective. Yeah. And it still has the same program language, memory management. Yeah. It's fantastic. And so you programmed uh, mobile stuff as well? Uh, not much. Some very simple ones. You could not write a real high quality application without much effort related to not to programming. Yeah. It's still. So uh, in mobile world now, mm -hmm. uh, so we have less platforms at mm -hmm. least. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I worked at mobile uh, industry as well. Mm -hmm. Even in the frame of the same platform, you have to care about many different devices. Yeah, and it's that's cool. not about programming, mostly. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and then Java Desktop. So then I think was the switch to Boland, right? Yeah. What was your task at, at, at Boland? Also, what do you, what do you had to do there? It was an interesting concept uh, of making uh, J2E programming easier mm -hmm. uh, by using special uh, or starting to be standard annotations mm -hmm. uh, related to different application servers and all that stuff. Tie that uh, to uh, modeling mm -hmm. to automatically uh, draw diagrams for code uh, or change the code based on diagrams change. So visual modeling uh, was a popular idea mm -hmm. all the time. And even when I started to work, uh, that was a visual modeling tool uh, that allowed to in change your code and model in both sides, both yes. directions. Yeah. Uh, what I used, I think it was bought by Bolin together, with Together Soft. Yeah, and Together was... Soft. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, uh, it was located in St. Petersburg. Yeah. I used to give a J4, I think, and uh, it came w with an API. And this API had the access to MOV, Meta Object Facility, which was the metadata of the object models. And we wrote a transformator, which used you know, the UML models and generated uh, Java code with xdoclet annotations, which could be uh, transformed to, but we, because we needed the crazy deployment descriptors. This was the problem back then. And, right. uh, that's, that's what we did. As well. Okay, so I did this as, as well. As a part of the product. Okay, interesting. Like Stocklet. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, I still uh, like the idea of having um, all some useful stuff uh, in comments. As yeah. Sometimes you can't just uh, use annotations, real annotations, or mm -hmm. you need to be uh, less dependent on the particular language. And this idea works well. 
I still like it as well. I mean, I, I like annotations. So the problem with the comments with uh, Xdoclet was uh, they were not type safe. So if you misspelled something, they, they were not found. You know, this was the problem. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> with annotations, is way better. Uh, and um, I use actually annotations all the time in, in Java E. I still use MicroProfile and Jakarta E all the time. And annotations are just great. They are working great. And it, what I like about that as developer, everything is one place. So you look at the code and you know what's going on. Yeah, not sure if... If anyone puts uh, JavaScript inside their <laughs> annotations, <laughs> yeah, JavaScript not, to make less I, type safe logic. <laughs> yeah, I was already in a task force where they put groovy code in a set of annotations to check the preconditions, and I asked there them you why, why you why you are doing this because groovy is a, is a dynamic, Java is static. You you had you know diverse of both worlds, and uh, I replaced that with an if statement in Java. So and 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 this was the you know the big reveal. So now I'm. The Java guru, you know, because I <laughs> <laughs> I know how to use if statement. Um, so um, interesting. So um, what I didn't like uh, in Boland case, they switched to Eclipse because I, I knew this is over. Because I mean, uh, what uh, the problem of Boland back then is the refactoring was not that great, and uh, I basically killed lots of Boland installation with Eclipse in Germany because the Eclipse standalone without any plugins. Uh, uh, could perform better refactorings than you know the Boland Professional Edition. What's what's forever? So this, this was the problem. So like renaming. Funny, I don't remember that one. Yeah, and um, and uh, then what happened was Eclipse was usable only with plugins, and this was the beginning of the end of for, for Eclipse. I, I just didn't use Eclipse anymore because depending on my clients, I had to install you know the, the uh, hundreds of plugins, and they were not compatible with each other. And the biggest joke of all jokes was that Eclipse was the OSGI or a plugin platform, but you couldn't actually, <laughs> you couldn't yes. maintain the versions properly. So like, okay, w w what is it, right? Is it like, uh, it, it's said to be, you know, a, a plugin architecture, but uh, the versioning doesn't work of the plugins. I, I understood that this, this was the fault of the plugins, not of the platform, but it was still not usable for me. And then I found uh, uh, NetBeans 5, I think, and this was great because I could. This was similar experience to JBuilder. It was very similar for me. First, it it looked nicer. You could you could download this once without any plugins, and it was usable from day one. And I still use it. I mean, this is um, this was actually the, the next IDE I I chosen. It's funny. Uh, I I still an, I'm still an Eclipse guy. Oh, really? Because I like the concepts behind the ID. So then I saw the internals, how the plugin system is built, uh, concepts of Perspectives, uh, debugging, etc. I really but liked it. In, yeah. it's, it's heavyweight. But in, we were forced in project to use the Eclipse RCP. And I never saw a more complex project without the <laughs> body class loader, you know, without all the hacks internally. Because all the business yeah. plugins, you had to introduce cycles. It, it was like it was. It was, uh, for instance, even Hibernate. If you introduce Hibernate, Hibernate knows uh, has to know you and you have to know Hibernate. You know, you have already cycles. So it was... Really hard to use uh, the RCP idea properly in projects, I would say. So for me, uh, if I say, so, okay, but if you are building a platform, this is a different story. I'm, I'm a user, you know, I'm not building the runtimes. Yes. I'm using the runtimes and so I have a complete different perspective on it. And for me, as a user, plug plugins are not very useful. What I would like to have one monolithic file, download it and use it, you know. I'm not interested in playing with plugins. I, I would like to use the stuff and not, you know, installing and deinstalling plugins and fiddle with the plugins. So even if a platform is modular, from my perspective as a user, the uh, plugin should be hidden from the user. Otherwise, it's not usable. Yeah, and now users just prefer uh, something that works right when yeah. you ask it to work. Yeah. That's how Fleet appeared. That's why mm -hmm. uh, VS Code is so popular. Just yeah, Visual Studio Code is launch nice. it and yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. it starts very quickly. Yeah, very good. So, uh, what happened after Boland? I think you know uh, one point. So, um, or what you did interesting Boland? You you wrote the modeling framework. Uh, or wrote you used the modeling framework, right? You used the modeling framework. Yes, uh, all that together, so guys. Uh, that, mm -hmm foundation of uh, that branch of Borland. And we also had uh, a few guys who participated in Delphi development mm -hmm. and it at that time. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the classical one. 
After that, uh, Borland just uh, disappeared. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was renamed to Embarcadero, right? Embarcadero, mm -hmm. yes. And mm -hmm. Transition. I worked for some time. Uh, continued to work for some time for Embarcadero, but uh, then uh, my colleagues uh, moved to a new uh, kind of startup company. Uh, and called me to join, mm -hmm. and that's what later uh, called Yota, mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, Russian 4G carrier. Mm -hmm. That was Vimax at that time, but okay. later... The story was complicated, uh, but the interesting part uh, is first uh, 4G phone uh, that uh, Yota produced uh, together with HTC as a hardware producer, and uh, we were developing... Uh, Service, uh, service part. Mm -hmm. So many fresh ideas at that time, like mm -hmm. social networks, mobile phone, video calls, music, mm -hmm. um, music radio services, messaging. Mm -hmm. All we used to be nowadays is unknown. We invented it parallel with all the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when was it? 2006? Uh, it was 2007, 2000, like maybe 8, mm -hmm. 9, 10, like this. Yeah. Very quickly, I have to tell you a story because it was also similar. In uh, 2002 and 2003, I worked for Volkswagen. I can talk about that because they allowed me also back then you know, to talk at conferences about that. So it was not that secret. Uh, in Java in a car. And uh, what we look at there, you know... Uh, traffic congestion prevention. So if uh, Java runs on every car and they communicate with each other, you can have peer-to-peer -peer communication and you know, you know, you can talk from car to car to car, you know, and, and, and then you have like, you know, network mm -hmm. without network because from car to peer-to-peer. -to -peer. So, and, um, so this, this works somehow. Uh, we use Jackstar back then, Jackstar Post Protocol, and um, I was in the train uh, back to, uh, to, uh, to Munich and in my um, compartment, there were uh, scientists talking about satellites, wild pigs, and transactions. And I, I couldn't understand anything. So I said, hey, wh what are you doing, actually? And it turned out <laughs> that they, <laughs> this is a German-like institution, and the, and the task is to count rabbits and wild pigs in Bavaria. And rabbits, uh, they do like, you know, they, they, they drive around with a, a van. They do some... Uh, countings and they uh, and they uh, have statistic method, you know, to to estimate, you know, the total population of rabbits. Mm -hmm. So okay, but for the white pigs, they wanted to have, you know, more like be uh, blood pressure and temperature, and you know, the uh, young PhD students had to 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 catch a pig which was dangerous, and uh, then you know, uh, given like a backpack with a small device which will measure everything, you know, and um, and then. I applied the idea of my Volkswagen to white pigs. I say, listen, if every pig is a peer, yes. you know, then if there's a family of pigs or whatever you call it, they could communicate with each other. And now the cool story is that every device can measure and, the, and the, the data can replicate around pigs. And then, you know, one pig family, if it meets another pig family, then you will know, you know, how often a pig family will meet the others. And the cool story is they had to go out in Nuremberg, this is a German city, but they stayed until Munich and let me to explain, you know, what's going on. And, um, and there was an, uh, I remember an, an, an older uh, man in, in, in the compartment and he, he listened and said, like, what are you talking about? And, uh, and his wife asked, you know, the scientist, what is actually the difference between rabbit and the other thing? There are two, two similar species, right? And the one said, okay, the rabbits have uh, white stripes, I remember, because of the backpack with the Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> this was a, but the cool story is, I talk about a conference about this funny stuff, um, and later I got an email that someone quit the job, and what he created on on the idea of white pigs, a Nokia phone, which is a peer, and if of your phone, and you meet another guy or 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 or, or, or gal with the same or phone with the same software. It, you are up, uh, uh, there is a, you are near to each other like I know Bluetooth let's say but it was without Bluetooth back then then maybe you have this share the same interests so he built a social network with you know Java 2me and and these phones because the idea is if someone is close to each other they share the same interests and the first test drive was Oktoberfest 
in oh, in Munich. Okay. So so this, big population. Yeah, but this place. was this was interesting, and 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 then uh, I also remember I was like at the telecom in Germany and 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 thought about this. Everyone was excited, and then I said, okay, but if this works well. We don't need the you know the, the 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 antennas anymore because we can communicate from phone to phone if the population is dense enough, right? Um, yeah, this was uh, this was uh, this was earlier, but also interesting. What what was possible back then? It's like twenty years ago, with pure Java, you know, without any specific CPUs. They were they were they were they were, they were, they were, they, they were slower than uh, the Apple uh, iPhone for sure, but even the you know the Apple Watch, I would say. Or oh, even Raspberry Pi. Yeah, much slower. Yeah, much slower. Mm -hmm. And there are also uh, already APIs for uh, GPS, camera. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Many but, things. Yeah, interesting. So, so, so you also had a similar trajectory. So you, you build social networks at Yota, you say. This was the name of the company. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what happened then? Uh, uh, then, uh, um, short period uh, of trying to... Uh, to launch uh, our own ideas, mm -hmm. uh, so Yoda just uh, started to shut down services, mm -hmm. and it ended uh, by telling uh, just the frequencies or mm -hmm. LTE. Okay, and um, we had more ideas what we, we could do, not for a special device, but for mm -hmm. popular devices at that time. Mm -hmm. But probably the target uh, was not so. Uh, right, like uh, the new thing, uh, iPhone was new thing. Okay, but uh, it had a minor share. Mm -hmm. The phones like Nokia had great share, mm -hmm. but it all flipped in like a year or two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Nokia fell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was the beginning of the end. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, then I started uh, work at a company called Quick Office. Quick Office. The mobile mobile development uh, looked. Uh, quite interesting, mm -hmm. uh, different area. So in Yota, I was uh, more focused on backend, mm -hmm. and uh, Android appeared, mm -hmm. and it was Java-like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so. Belvic. Uh, yeah. Some of my ex-colleagues uh, worked at that company. It was later acquired by Google, mm -hmm. but uh, not kind of acquired in the traditional sense. Okay. Uh, so we did not become. Uh, Google employees, mm -hmm. but the technology was very interesting. So you um, were also at the company back then, which was acquired by Google? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. And what was the name of uh, Quick Office? It was a Quick Office. Quick Office. Okay. Yes. The technology uh, was Mobile Office mm -hmm. for uh, different uh, mobile platforms, iOS, Android. Mm -hmm. And the challenge was to make uh, something that works uh, as well or better uh, like uh, desktop. Mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. on a very small device. Mm -hmm. Still challenging right now. Uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, I started to think much more about performance at that time. Mm -hmm. Because then you're really, really limited, uh, not by some unpredictable load coming from the outside. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, Black Friday, mm -hmm. if you don't know about Black Fridays. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Or something similar, then your backend fails. Uh, but on mobile phone, you will immediately see that you do something right mm -hmm. uh, or something wrong mm -hmm. in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. So and what what happened to you? So then you were the, your company were acquired, but you were not acquired, or uh, yeah, the, it it was clear at the time. So I just uh, changed uh, and started uh, to work uh, at Deutsche Bank. Oh, wow. okay. Still have that branch in St. Petersburg, uh, and f from the perspective perspective uh, of uh, modern backend development, it was very uh, productive, intensive, and it was great experience mm -hmm. for me uh, to see what engineering is applied for modern backends or really uh, well optimized banking systems mm -hmm. inside. Uh, what you what technology you use, but then Java? Java. Mm -hmm. Java and some other technologies that were connected and used along the Java, but mostly mostly Java. You used back then already a web celebrity because I was also at Deutsche Bank and we introduced back then uh, web celebrity or open liberty with Java E6, I think. No, it was Spring. Okay. Probably that it was then I first met Spring. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, 
quite mature by that time because Spring is also 20 years old now. Yeah. And it was like 10 years ago. So you could even use you know, your XSLT knowledge to transfor transform the Spring XML configuration. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, maybe it was... I don't remember, by the way, was it annotation-based or XML-based mostly? I believe both were applied, but mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, Interesting. So you're also with Deutsche Bank. Mm -hmm. I was also in Deutsche Bank, what I remember, but as an external developer, every day I had, you know, to buy a card for the launch. And I think I had to, I yeah, for 20 euro and I got, or 50 euro, and I got the money back at the end of the day. But the money was freshly printed. So I always had, you know, the, 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 the very, <laughs> very new banknotes, you know. And and people already suspected me that I'm a, like a like a bandit or something, you know, like a criminal that I'm printing money at home because uh, all the money I had was very fresh and no re really pristine quality of of banknotes. This was my okay, Deutsche Bank stories about Germany. <laughs> Deutsche Bank Deutsche Bank experience. This was my in Munich. Sounds great. Uh, yeah, it, it was a bit simpler in our case. Uh, still, yeah, but very intense experience. Uh, I worked only for maybe half a year mm -hmm. uh, because I got a chance uh, to participate uh, to, be, to become a part uh, of Oracle Performance Team. Oh, was it Oracle? Oracle? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for the story is uh, very, as we mentioned, circular. So then I started. Uh, then I learned at the university. Uh, small group of people were. We're sitting in another company, again, closely related uh, to, to our department, mm -hmm. and they worked for Sun Microsystems. Okay. And some of that people still work in Java space mm -hmm. now and in our company. Okay. So, so, so you became... Same, uh, same people. Why, why you switched from Deutsche Bank to Oracle? Was like Oracle your dream to work, you know, for Oracle Performance Team, or you wanted to do something with Java? So, you know, we write Java and... I'm invited to Java organization, and in Java organization, I'm invited to participate uh, in performance enhancements. Perfect. No, no, this is what I suspected. So, so I, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that was a challenging uh, thing because uh, I didn't know very much about uh, this area. I mean, both theory and practice mm -hmm. of uh, doing this work. And yeah, no but one knows. Then that. you expect that. No one knows. I mean, you, you have to you, you, will, you have to dig deep. I mean, who 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 develops in the leisure the JVM, right? Yes, uh, you expect that you will be optimizing some Java programs, but instead uh, you start to learn uh, the virtual machine. Mm -hmm. C probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, getting back to C plus mm plus. -hmm. And, and was it interesting? All awful stuff. at Oracle. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. I learned uh, many new things. Tried new things. Uh, changed my mind, I believe. Mm -hmm. To better or to worse? What, I mean, what, <laughs> what, what do I think about development at all? And okay. How to approach that. I started to understand better uh, people uh, who tried to teach me something mm -hmm. in the high school mm -hmm. because things started to connect finally. Okay. <laughs> it took so many years. So you, it, uh, it took Oracle, you know, in the, the Oracle word. You, it, it took Oracle in order to understand everything. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, by the way, uh, do you know why Delphi was called Delphi? No. Because if you uh, want to go to Oracle, you go to Delphi. Ah, okay. Cool insight. Yes. I, uh, I remember the logo, like Delphi. This was like a Greek something, right? So I remember this Delphi logo. Shapes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to, to learn Delphi. Why? Because back then was I, I knew Pascal. And someone told me, you no, know, Delphi is the new real object-oriented Pascal. So I said, okay, then I have to learn it. But then, you know, C and Java came in, so I never learned Delphi, actually. So I, I, <laughs> that's a problem. Um, yeah. And, um, and I was a Boland fanboy, more or less. I like all the tools. This is why I also know Kylix. I also wanted to try it out. And, um, yeah, what I also uh, really like is the look and feel of Boland back then. It, it looked beautiful. I remember even the splash screen with the, you know, with the vehicle, I think it was like uh, it lifted something, right? A construction site or something. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah, it was uh, nice. The entire JBCL library was also nicely done. You know, the Java Boland 
foundation library or something, a class library or whatever it was called. So it was everything was nicely do- done, nicely packaged, nicely designed. Um, this was this was interesting. So what you did at Oracle? So you achieved. So you, you had you know your learning phase, but then what what you were able to optimize something. Yeah, I'll get back a little. Uh, mm-hmm. This all the transition that happened before I came, mm-hmm. then Oracle acquired Sun. Mm-hmm. So for many years uh, I did not came to Sun to work because like okay I need some other ex- experience because I see uh, that people uh, still work there, don't change uh, mm-hmm. uh, their company, and mm-hmm. still do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looked a bit boring. Okay, uh, and. Then I saw, okay, uh, I, I want to learn this thing about performance. Mm-hmm. That will help me mm-hmm. on the market. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting. Uh, and <laughs> that's what I do still. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's, that's the longest uh, specialization that I have and along the Java. So there were multiple uh, projects going on uh, in Oracle mm-hmm. at the time and in, in Java. It was uh, at the time of uh, Java 8, so I was a bit late to participate in Java 8 features. Mm-hmm. It was late, late 7 and 8 then, uh, but uh, then it was uh, the work related to uh, Java C to compiler, mm-hmm. to see if we can improve uh, it dramatically or we need to rewrite it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and, so, 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 and so you improved the Java C performance? Uh, it was to me. It was more kind of educational project. Okay. So uh, I wasn't expert in this compiler, mm-hmm. and sometimes uh, to perform real improvements, you should uh, better go from the side of algorithm yeah. or basic approach that you take in the program, mm-hmm. not some uh, low-level optimization. Yeah, I'm completely with you. So I have uh, absolutely no experience with Java C, but I can tell you that. Uh, on the business level, it's exactly the same. If you if you understand you know the business domain really well, you can you can find interesting shortcuts and optimizations, which will never find just looking from the technical perspective at the code. There's also validation uh, or new uh, classes and optimizations uh, in, for example, in concurrency libraries. Mm-hmm. So uh, my colleagues really uh, teach me a lot. Mm-hmm. Alexey Shapedov, Sergey Koksenko. Mm-hmm. Probably know them. Then uh, other topics, features that were implemented as a performance enhancements in mind, mm-hmm. AOT and plus data sharing. Interesting. So it was actually the recent stuff what you worked on. Uh, yeah. You, you also uh, work not only for making some optimizations, mm-hmm. but for performance tracking, for analysis, current changes or current performance. Mm-hmm different areas. And how big was the team? Also, so how, how many colleagues do you have for the optimization? Uh, the team is still rather small, and it was small at this time. Mm-hmm. At that time, maybe seven, eight people. Yeah, interesting. So I, I'm see, always interested in the team size now. because, uh, you know, you don't need a huge team to achieve something significant. So this is also my impression. Yes, mm-hmm. you, you know my colleagues. Uh, mm-hmm. At that time, I worked with Monica Bective. Mm-hmm. Uh, class red stat. Mm-hmm. You see, uh, sometimes uh, people uh, come to different companies or just mm-hmm. gather together uh, mm-hmm. in one place, mm-hmm. like at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what happened then? So uh, what I understood is uh, Oracle just shut down the site, right? Yeah, not completely. So it still exists Okay. as an Oracle branch, but uh, the part of Java organization, mm-hmm. St. Petersburg, was going to shut down. Mm-hmm. And at that time, also started. Okay. But uh, what is Oracle like it, site doing without Java? I mean, what what are they doing there? Uh, systems. Okay. Well, there are many lines of business. Okay. Uh, so more consulting, right? Or need to figure that out precisely. Uh, what's what's left? Who's left there? Yeah, because it's interesting. I mean, because uh, most of, of the, what Oracle is doing is Java. Even the cloud is mostly Java. Uh, no, the present no. So the Java organization in Oracle is not that big. This, this is what I know, but uh, but uh, they they uh, are using lots of Java software inside Oracle. This is what I wanted to say. Yes. So if yes. If, if, if you if you're not focused you know, on on this core Java, but you would use you know you would maintain other Oracle products, it's very likely that it's Java inside. This is what I well, maybe you are not you know involved in Java core, but 
if you are working for Oracle, it's very likely if you develop software, that it will, you know, touch on Java. Yes, yeah, so a lot of middleware. Yeah, middleware, uh, exactly. The entire web logic and web logic, similar stuff, and all the you know, all the other middleware software uh, is is uh, Java based. Is my opinion. Okay, interesting. And and then um, so it, and then you started Bellsoft. So what's the name yeah, and how it started? Bell, Bellsoft uh, turned five years these days. Ah, how, how it started, and why the name, and what was the idea? Uh, the name is still a kind of mysterious, uh, occasionally selected one. But this is a great name. I was invited to the JRush conference, and the company was Bellsoft. And uh, I had absolutely no time, but I was like, what is Bellsoft? It sounds interesting, you know, because it was Bell, <laughs> okay. Bell uh, software was back then. There was Bell and they had re uh, lots of research projects, as I remember. I have to research this was in Silicon Valley. And I saw, I thought there's some connection there or something. It's really interesting. Jay Rush and Bell Soft. It's like, why Bell Soft? Why? And um, yeah, this was, uh, I was uh, immediately curious about the, the, the name. Um, so, and, we, and we say it's, it's a tribute to Bell Labs, but. Uh, Bell Labs, exactly. Yeah. Bell Labs. Um, and um, how, how you started? So you just go to coffee shop and said, okay, we start a company, or what was the whole story behind? Uh, yeah, I, I joined not right from the very start. Okay. A uh, few months later, mm -hmm. then my contract with Oracle uh, ended up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Basically like that. Mm -hmm. The idea that uh, there are a lot of uh, cool engineers mm -hmm. uh, not willing to relocate mm -hmm. and willing to continue uh, to work in the area of Java, mm -hmm. of uh, high skill development, virtual machines. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, performance optimizations, hardware architectures. Okay. Yeah. And so, and then you started Bell Bellsoft, and. W what you did? I mean, what are you doing there the entire day? Uh, different things. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, of course, we have uh, the Berka. That's uh, the main mm -hmm. core product behind the like, company. It's like OpenJDK distro, right? Behind that. Yeah, OpenJDK distro. And why the Berka is better than, yeah. let's say, OpenJDK plane or whatever? <laughs> Not to offend uh, anyone. So we just... my, my favorite pitch is uh, that there is no such distro called OpenJDK. Okay. So here, uh, everyone is equal uh, mm -hmm. who creates uh, a distro. And it's not that easy. Right now, like, mm -hmm. I mean, right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> my colleagues uh, eagerly uh, prepare coming update release, mm -hmm. multiple versions. Okay. Uh, of Java, and it's a tough time. Okay. So, um, it's very interesting, and you know, then you got all that experience working uh, the, that process, uh, building a JDK, mm -hmm. of releasing a JDK, mm -hmm. and you have a chance uh, to continue. Mm -hmm. it, it is some kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that we can do it well. Mm -hmm. This is important. But still, but and, wh uh, wh why I should buy Liberica? Uh, you don't have to buy. I know. You can just but use I want. it. Why, yes. why I should? Uh, you don't buy Liberica, uh, you buy support. Yeah. So if you want support, uh, which is rather inexpensive, okay, uh, but still high quality, or uh, you prefer... Uh, Quickly, directly talking to engineers mm -hmm. of your problems. Then, <clears throat> yeah, you so what? As as an uh, as a distro, uh, yeah, you can be sure about uh, having all the necessary patches mm -hmm. in because of how that's how team works. We know uh, that how we participate in security vulnerability group and. Yeah, this is what oh, I can imagine open. because uh, yeah. if you are a small team yeah. and I buy support from you, uh, I got to know my questions answered really quick. So if you remain small, <laughs> your company should not grow <laughs> because if it grows, it'd be usually, you know, <laughs> the, the smaller the team, the better the support. This is what, what I, my experience from, from, from my, you know, support years. Yeah, and it's not that small. Uh, we're just a focused company. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, 
uh, Red Hat team is uh, not times larger. No, of course not. Maybe. But but I mean, yeah, but it takes maybe longer until someone who knows the answer, you know, answers. Uh, who knows the question uh, answer to a question? Yeah, but answer. the support workflow is different. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because, uh, but uh, is there any unique features in Liberica, or are you still working on the unique features? Uh, we add uh, some features for update releases uh, mm -hmm. that we believe are fine tested and provide slightly better performance mm -hmm. for uh, a special flavor. Mm -hmm. that, that's called uh, Liberica Lite, so it's slimmer and contains additional uh, security enhancement. Oh, um, sorry, additional performance enhancements. Okay. So it is faster and, than uh, faster than the usual Open JDK or. Uh, yeah. yeah, kind of. Uh, more flavors, not just light, but also full. Uh, the JavaFX bundled, mm -hmm. and that is JavaFX with additional uh, security fixes mm -hmm. or fixes. containers. Uh, of course, uh, you have uh, different platforms in mind. So, uh, Liberica has the most number of platforms supported uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. If you really need uh, one JDK for everything, mm -hmm. that's one of the best choices. Uh, it's the default runtime for Spring mm -hmm. or for uh, Tanzu. Tanzu uses uh, Liberica. Oh, so if I if I so buy uh, Tanzu uh, commercial support, I will get Liberica. Yes. Uh, Interesting. We will actually this, support it. This is actually a huge, uh, huge client. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, default uh, runtime for Spring containers, mm -hmm. then you build a container with mm -hmm. build bot image. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, choose uh, a traditional JVM flavor, it will be Liberica JDK okay. or JRE. Uh, and uh, if you choose native image, it will be Liberica native image kit. Okay. Our uh, assembly of uh, RealVM. This is actually huge news for you, right? For, for your team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this native image kit? Uh, is it like uh, which is it? I assume it is like a fork of GraalVM, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, one of distributions again yeah. of GraalVM. Like Mandrel from uh, Red Hat is like uh, yeah, yes, similar. pretty uh, similar to Mandrel. Mm -hmm. And you're doing any we optimizations provide... there, or or is it like just a supported fork? Fork, or because I was uh, really interested, what, what are you actually doing? So you are looking at the Open JDK, and if your clients get it, you're patching, you know, the software for for your clients. And I assume in one point of time you also have, you know, to 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 move the patches upstream to the Open JDK project. Otherwise, you will fork forever, which is not sustainable, right? Yeah, sure. So we we try to. Um roll out the patches as soon as, as soon as possible yeah exactly mm -hmm. so uh, mostly we work directly in upstream and then backports if needed mm -hmm. both for optimizations and for fixes of course mm -hmm. so we don't hold uh, real forks okay so for light uh, that were just small sets of patches mm -hmm. for that flavor of mm -hmm. JDK so we have both standard which is a build of the of what what of what we have in the repository mm -hmm. this version. Mm -hmm. So what it means is what yeah uh, we also support uh, mm -hmm. Alpine and now Alpaca, mm -hmm. both for JDK and for native image. Mm -hmm. It's easy to create uh, smallest but still uh, fully functional containers mm -hmm. based on that. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting story, actually. What I like the most now, now your software gets now used a lot, and a small company have a huge impact, actually. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I already uh, saw that the yes. Bellsoft is one of the top committers, right? Uh, in 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 or right. participators in I think JCP and OpenJDK, right? Uh, yes, JCP member and uh, among top enterprise contributors, you mm -hmm. uh, releases starting mm -hmm. from JDK eleven. It's a great story. It's fun, yeah. And up up till recent uh, until recent time, uh, we backported uh, enhancements to eleven mm -hmm. quite eagerly. But then seventeen came out. Probably it's time to switch to yeah. Seventeen, 17 is LTS is uh, just a reasonable move. I mean, seven yeah, seven is good enough. Perfect. 
Do you have a Twitter account or something where people can find you on the internet? Uh, yeah, Twitter is the easiest way. Yeah. So it's called the Chico. Mm -hmm. And Bellsoft is also on Twitter. Bell Software. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a Twitter handle for the company. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we have a nice stream of news or useful things mm -hmm. in different social networks. We have blog. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a few articles there. Okay. Yeah, put it in the show notes. It up. So you can send me a mail. I will put all the links to the show notes, blog or whatever yeah. you have. A yeah, great story. So um, And uh, I met you. Um, I don't know what it was. It was uh, a, a J-Rush conference. This was it. But a funny story. You don't know about yeah. it. This is like closing closing funny story. So before be, uh, you, you run late somehow. I was the last one at the conference. And everything was already late. And for me, it was really late because, because of the time shift. And the entire story was a little bit crazy because the J-Rush event was announced with Russian time and US time, which happened to be 12 hours, exactly 12 hours apart, but are not my time, you know. This is the CAT is, uh, I think, yes. two, two hours, you know, uh, shifted from the Russian or the, or the uh, US time. And as I connected at the conference, I was not sure whether I am in the right time zone. And then someone came in. So this was like your media team. And the media team, they had like, you know, the media manager and the super media manager. And everyone everyone wanted to talk with me and, and ask questions. And I answer all the questions. And I say, wait a minute. When the conference starts, I'm, I'm already online or what is it? Who are you, right? Why are there so many people in the backstage? And 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 I was, you know, I, the nice guy came and 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 the, I forgot the names, like you know, site manager and product manager and whoever manager. I was like, okay, can I just you know give me the real thing? And and then we met, you know, and then the conference started. This was the funny story of of the entire thing. So, but I really enjoyed the entire experience. It was really nicely done, and I think it's still online, right? The talk should be somewhere. Yes, yes, we plan next releases. Uh, I hope they will be as good as you described. Mm. Thank you very much. I will let know my colleagues that. And it was a fun, it was a it fun was experience. Fun, yeah. Yeah. And the entire J-Rush was a fun experience. And I hope that uh, that um, maybe it is, it's recorded on YouTube, I guess, right? Uh, yes, it should be on YouTube. Yeah, so uh, we'll try to find it as well. The page uh, of the conference uh, should be active and yeah. I believe Links should be there also. So thank you. It was fun to talk. And uh, we uncovered yeah, a piece good. of Java history and history of Russian computers. Like, uh, <laughs> yes. I find the Minsk fascinated. <laughs> <personal name>. one. <laughs> the, the Minsk fascinated. I will have to look it up in Wikipedia what it was. And uh, if you can, send me a link for of your first personal computer. I still forgot the name, the Russian one. The Russian one. Yeah, I, I will find... Uh... This would be nice. I'll at least try to find the description. Because your computer is unique. All other guests are a little bit boring, you know, C64, <laughs> ZX, and Commodore. The, from U <laughs> Commodore. The from UK have the um, BBC something. Uh, and uh, so I already know almost, but you surprised me. So it was a nice chat. Thank you, Adam. Thank you.